Good morning, my little tattletales and tattlemelts, because representation matters. Yo, get up. We don't got a time to, we don't have time to spare. Listen, I just came in. Y'all might just be waking up. Y'all, Kevin Hunter has let everything go. Remember I said he was doing a live in my other video, but Instagram literally shut his main page down because of, what was it, community guideline violations a la Kanye West, to which I literally said, this is some BS, because I've been on Kevin's Hunter page since all this windy mess happened, and he don't post anything against community but guidelines. Well, guess what? He made good on his promise, he got to his second page, and baby, this, is explosive he talked about his relationship with sharina he talked about the fallout and how him and wendy's marriage actually crumbled he talked about his son and his struggles and guess what y'all he talked about basically listen i'll just say it because i'm not para i'm gonna paraphrase he literally said that wendy's worth more dead then alive to her team. Not only are they enablers, but when it sounds like she was having some type of OD or serious medical thing that required um, two blood transfusions and an emergency medical team, a private one, they refuse to let those people up. And he also said that his son literally had to threaten to call the cops before they would let them come up. And listen, this is explosive. Let's get into the story. I actually taped the whole live because you know I'm nosy. I'm going to post it a little bit later. Make sure you subscribe, like, turn on your notifications if you want to get the full live. It was an hour long live. I'm probably like, but you know what? Let me get to this story. And y'all get this. Y'all get the uh, video as soon as it uploads. But be on the lookout for the upload because even his journey and what he talks about, he talks about it with so much feeling and conviction. He lets us know a lot about, about himself. He grew up without really any family on his own from the age of 15. That's why it was so important for him to give his son a sibling so he wouldn't be alone in the world. All this stuff. And you know what? I have to say this before I get to uh, the report. Um, Kevin, this is a really complicated situation. And I see his frustration that myself included, people in the blogs and the media have painted him just as this villain. Here's the thing. I listened to that whole live. Kevin did some really messed up stuff, but he's telling it from his point of view and he did it for his happiness, not necessarily to hurt Wendy. He talks about the fact that he doesn't regret his child with Serena. He actually begged her to have a child because Wendy was so focused on the career. To which I said, okay, so this woman was out here building y'all legacy and you out here cheating on her. But he acknowledges that Wendy was building the legacy. But the one thing he felt he needed, which was another child, she was so focused on work, she couldn't do it. Now, here's the thing. I know a little bit about the backstory. Wendy had multiple miscarriages and dangerous miscarriage. She tried to give Kevin this family that he wanted with multiple children, but her body was not capable. Kevin looks at that as saying she was so focused on work. And I'll tell you when he's talking about her, there's a lot of animosity in his voice. Well, not animosity, but there's still a lot of anger between Kevin and Wendy, you can tell. He blamed her for some things, but he speaks to her about my son's mother. So he puts her on the level of this person I respect and I wish her well because she's my son's mother, but there's no law of loss between her and Kevin. Again, this is an incredibly complex situation. I'll do a breakdown later on of their dynamics because he did give so much. And it's nice when you can humanize someone, but the one thing he did speak on is he went in there and that's someone that the network did not respect. And I don't know why, why, why and we acknowledge their systematic racism. We don't acknowledge that when people are trailblazers and ground play, the way people want to post, put up, post, post up, talking about something. Wendy is the, the example of everybody. She was a trailblazer, ground baker, but nobody, everybody, nobody wants to get below that shallow mess to talk about how hard it is for basically, and I might be being dramatic, two freedom fighters to go into a corporate America that rejects you for not having the right education, the right look, the right way of talking that they like, rejects you, stigmatizes you, and yes, does racist things to you to minimize you. And even when you reach the top, even when you're the pinnacle, you are still the subject of their racism because like Kevin said, they wouldn't do this to an Ellen, and they wouldn't do this to a Jimmy Fallon. And if you're like, well, Jimmy Fallon, yeah, Jimmy Fallon is, it's the biggest, allegedly, the biggest loosely held secret that he suffers with massive 
addiction issues. I believe it is alcohol, massive issues. And the studio mobilized a whole machine of holding him up, getting him help, getting him to rehab. And he said, Wendy was not privy to that. Wendy was not privy to that. You guys, the video is so much. I'm going to post it later today so you can hear it in Kevin's own words because it's really powerful with the emotion that he's talking about. And I want to hear after that what y'all think. But let's get to this condensed report, right? Okay, so the report starts. Wendy Williams' ex-husband, Kevin Hunter, reveals talk show host received a blood received two blood transfusions, accuses her team of attempting to block medical professionals during emergency. That's putting it nicely. Now, it goes on to say that Kevin starts off by saying, when it comes to whatever narratives that might be spun out there regarding me, my entire family, I want to first and foremost say I respect, I truly respect, I was able to experience with my ex-wife and what we were able to accomplish. Again, I'm posting all this on my video. Make sure you turn on likes and subscribe so you can hear it in the whole world their own words because all these news reports don't forget these are big companies and i'm not joking they're posting what they want to do to create a certain narrative that literally glosses over the things that he said and this is where kevin in the beginning expressed a lot of regret that both him and wendy because they were trying to build a legacy put her career first instead of the family he then gave her shouts out saying what she has clearly accomplished on her own and her own merit and what we were able to accomplish together. He's not taking away anything from Wendy, but he is saying that we accomplished a lot together. Kevin accomplished a lot together, right? Now get this. He did reference his alleged affair with Sharina husband. I'm posting the video in a second, um, which was interesting because he, you can tell he really, really, really loves Sharina. He don't want no one to blame her. He said that when he first found out to Sharina, when she first found out she was pregnant, wanted to terminate the pregnancy because she, well, I guess she was an internal side piece mistress. And that's not to disrespect her, but it seems like Wendy and Kevin had an arrangement and Sharina was fine with that arrangement. Now, to be fair, Kevin is not, does not come across as a monster. However, he comes across as an inconsiderate jerk whose own want for what he wanted in life literally did major damage to Wendy because at the end of the day every time she went into rehab it's because when you and Sharina from what we saw got too close do you see what I'm saying anyway right um he says when it comes to my personal life or what the public has been able to see in real time I take full accountability for my actions and understanding how it might have hurt a lot of people again not a monster but Kevin it didn't might it did it rocked this woman to her core just like young rich and um uh, I'm sorry young famous and African Annie. If you guys haven't been watching that reality TV show, I'm recapping it. You need to get into it. It's on Netflix. Her relationship with Tubaba is a lot like what it seemed like Wendy's relationship was with Kevin with that blind sla slavish devotion. Anyway, he said, I did. And for that, I wish her nothing but the best of wellness and support. Great. But that's when I was like, there's still a lot of anger between you guys. And I think he blames Wendy low key for how the network threw him away. Wendy was probably the one cheerleading it because he never referred to her as her name. It was always that person, somebody, my son's mother, which let me know you can't even say her name. Ooh, there's a lot going on. But he did say, I did hurt somebody. And for that, I wish her nothing but the best and wellness and support. Kevin, I, Kelvin, sorry. Why do y'all keep telling me this man's name is Kevin when it's Kelvin? I was, for once, I know I mispronounced everybody's name. For once, I got a name right. <laughs> Ain't that funny. Anyway, Kelvin was saying that um, he uh, he wished, but well, I remember when he posted that thing saying health is wealth, but I think the animosity as he gets into it goes into how Wendy prioritized building an empire above even her own health, their health. Like I said, when you are breaking glass ceilings, you are going to war. And we all know that in war, people get taken down by enemy fire, friendly fighter, that glass ceiling, those shards gets in your soul. That's why, that's why even now in the freedom fighters from 1960 and 70, we are still dealing with the poison that happened from when they sacrificed everything, even the family unit, even their own children to march across lines where dogs were biting at them. They sacrificed everything so that we can enjoy freedom. Sorry, Tattletales, got emotional for a second. Anyway, right? Kevin then starts to talk about him being fired from the Willie Williams show, and he was given his walking papers after Wendy's, uh, Wendy's 
uh, divorced him. He accuses them of wrongfully terminating him in 2019 after Wendy filed for divorce. He claims he was responsible for the show's success and believes they owe him. Now here's this, the producers do owe him and after you hear the live, I'm gonna post the snippets because it's an hour long live, I'm breaking it down. Those producers are evil, evil, evil. And it really bothered me that so many people cite, well, Wendy's this, Wendy's that, if you're sick. When he talks about the way they treated her, when they saw, they enabled the drug use, they saw it and she was worth more dead than alive to them. Listen, now get this, even though what he, Kevin also did clarify, that him and Wendy are not getting back together. Sharina is his woman and she cred he credits her with saving his life and giving him happiness and peace. And to everybody that said he messed up the bag, he gave the, they gave the bag back to him tenfold. He said, these people stripped me of, from me all my success and what I accomplished because, because of who I chose to be with. They gave them no budget. He said he was running around having to borrow, beg, and steal clothes for Wendy because she wasn't a sample size. He said he had to do everything. He had to learn with no production experience, no formal education. He had to learn to do everything. And from that, he made the number, they made the number one daytime talk show. He literally said he went through he went on to trash Wendy's producers for already moving on to Sherry Shepard. He compared the situation to an athlete being injured. Kevin said a team would allow their star to recover and come back, not discard them. That is true. But again, as much as y'all were cheering, oh what? So what? Yo, I'm sorry, your jobs discard y'all and make y'all feel disposable. What they did to Wendy was actionable. It is illegal, and I hope they get every penny they deserve. Listen. He literally said that during his divorce, he continued helping Wendy with her issues, saying, I still had to stay her life. He said they are, he said the people around him, the management team, he said the snakes, the vipers, everything, they are responsible for almost seeing her life come to end. He said these current people in place, management, that clearly put her in life or death situations and denied medical coverage and care. Now listen. Y'all can talk all that mess, talking about some, talking about some corporate pick me's. Ellie, she ain't kind of right. She deserved to be fired. It is actionable and illegal and a violation of EEOC, state and federal, right? The federal's EEOC states is New York human rights law to literally deny medical coverage and care, especially an employer. And Kevin goes on to say, if it wasn't for my son and myself stepping in, that would be it. He described an in incident when Wendy needed help, but, but he said that the management team refused to let uh, Kevin Jr. allow a, a private medical team. They even said he couldn't call a regular ambulance. He had to call a private medical team to keep it hush-hush to treat her during her health scare. It wasn't a health scare. It sounded like she was ODing. He literally said that Kevin Jr. threatened to call the cops to get team members to get out of his way. And two blood transfusions later, Wendy, the queen, is still here. He said there, there's still a lot of vultures around Wendy and he accuses people of the show of dropping the ball once he left and making sure she was taken care of properly. He said you'd never see this happen to Ellen or Jimmy Fallon. And I agree. I agree. I Listen, since I've been on, I always thought everybody thought like me, but since I've been on social media, it shocks me how many people refuse to accept that there is systematic racism, especially in corporate America. And every single time, the, but listen, it's not the fact of whether Wendy did this or Kevin did this or Kanye did this or anybody did this. It's the fact that when you look at the actual equal counterpart to someone that is not melanated, the same fact set in the same situation, they are not given the level of trust, respect, care, or even leeway that they give others. It's not about punishing that person or whether that person was right or wrong. It's about how are people in this situation, this exact situation normally treated. If you guys don't know, Jimmy Fallon is known. It's a closely held secret. Rumors for years that he is a functioning alcoholic. He has been to rehab allegedly several times. The network props him up, gives him the care. He has a sober coach. They go out their way to make sure that nothing happens to him. Where, as Kevin said, when it came to Wendy, the same, and even Ellen, when it came to Wendy, the same situation, what did they do? They were literally looking like in his heart that they were just waiting for her to go because she was worth more uh, 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 not breathing than breathing, worth more dead than alive. Now listen, he literally, Kevin does admit to having an affair, but like he said, why does having an affair affect me being terminated. I think this is where a lot of his anger and animosity to Wendy surfaces from. 
Kevin doesn't realize you literally, I know you were chasing your happiness and you wanted a family. He literally said that he's been alone since the age of 15. He wanted to give his child a sibling so he would never be alone on earth. Kevin has a complicated childhood and you can see the way he's sincere about this. But in your quest for your happiness, you literally ripped this woman apart, ripped her heart apart, and you are one of the main reasons why she couldn't even stand up on stage. You know, that which you nourished her soul, but you also destroyed it. That said, I do believe that Wendy was lockstep in tow with this production company that threw Kevin away after they got to divorce, right? Now that said, that said, Wendy, the Debmar Mercury still needs to answer for what they did. Because morally, even though Wendy might have had the right to feel that way, guess what? Debmar Mercury didn't and what they did was straight up illegal under the eyes of the law denying her medical care is illegal and I don't care what y'all say Wendy this not I told y'all from the beginning when I heard the facts Wendy got a case and Wendy's gonna win that case and I hope Kevin and Wendy bankrupt Debmar Mercury and Lionsgate for the things that they did both present and past and the things that they're still doing trying to according to Kevin villainize their son speaks a little bit or alludes to the Wells Fargo situation saying Kevin Jr. is taking care of Kevin Jr. is taking care of his mother and has his full support. He literally loves his son so much and says great things. Again, Kevin Sr. is a complicated man and Wendy's situation is super, super complicated. And I even I mean, listen, I have my viewpoints and y'all know I'm a loud mouth and I'm paid to be messy, but it really did make me say I need to dig a little bit deeper and see what's going on on both sides because even the way I was looking at it was a very, very simplistic. And Kevin added a lot of nuance and brush strokes to this picture, but you'll hear it in the video because I'm going to have maybe a live and a talk about it, right? He's concerned people are going to try and paint Kevin Jr. as a monster to try and take control of Wendy, just like he said for years they tried to take paint him as a monster until they could get him out the way and then the last step left is their son this is exactly what wells fargo is trying to do because in the video kevin does say that how er people now trying to say that wendy's son he, and he says his son is a gentle giant he only wants to see his mom get well he has a heart of gold and he's so sweet and so gentle and i've talked to a lot of people they have that same impression of kevin jr whatever happened between kevin senior and wendy they raised an incredibly sensitive loving in tuned man right but they're saying that now that he's trying to take over with his mom and see what's going they're trying to paint wendy's son her only son, her only heir, her only heir as someone that's trying to use and take care, take a, take advantage of his mom and they need to take her money and keep it safe. Again, you guys, Wendy ain't nothing but a commodity to those people. And honestly, you guys, we need to wake up to the fact of when people are using us and as commodities, treating us as commodities. You're fine to entertain, to make us money, to dance when we want y'all to dance, but don't ask for no rights and don't think that you got the same rights and you better not try to come in here and ask for, e for equal respect because when you do, trust and believe, we'll make sure we'll bring the hand of everything down on you. And it's sad that some of the people that look like Winnie that should be rocking with their 10 toes down because at the end of the day, we all been through something like this if not to the scale definitely something in line with this we should all know the way it feels and whenever again when you see one person being oppressed because of something you share in common don't sit there and clap don't sit there, sit there and be thankful you need to just sit there if you don't do anything to speak out about it and ask how long before they come for you y'all tattletales let me know what you think in the comments look out for those videos i'm posting on make sure y'all be respectful and i want to hear what y'all guys say